Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I'm your host, Renee Bauer, and I have a super fun episode today. I am here with John and Sherry Monty, who are co-founders of a Seattle-based award-winning interior design and professional organizing firm called Elegant Simplicity. Their motto is to make your home feel like a place you never want to leave. They believe in teaching others how to live a more purposeful life by decluttering, organizing, and designing a home that you can call your guilty pleasure. They have major street cred, having been published in a whole laundry list of online and print publications. And so we are here today to talk about creating a space that you love and a home that you love. So welcome, guys. Hey, Renee. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. So on your website, you say, we dream about the infinite ways we can help women live with purpose by decluttering, organizing, and designing a home that hugs their soul. Like, I love that. And this is, your work is about so much more than just like cleaning out a closet. So can yeah. you share a little bit about like where, where it comes from? Yeah. You know, when it, when it comes to um, home, I, I think that what most people are truly wanting from their home isn't just excess stuff. Because let's face it, life is already complicated enough as it is. And so the last thing we want or even need is a home that for our homes to become a place of overconsumption or to simply fill our homes with stuff just for the sake of filling it. You know, I think deep down, um, John and I believe that, that home is more like a, a mere reflection of ourselves and, and it should be designed in a way that's intuitive and that it serves us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so when you say that you're looking for a home that hugs your soul, like what, is, what does that look like? Is there a one blueprint for, for everybody? Should everyone be doing like one certain thing? <laughs> yeah, um, yes and no. Um, and you know, really what we say is, um, for a home to hug its people, it's to have a place where deep, meaningful connection happens, um, where friends and family put down their devices uh, and look around at each other, kind of soak in all of those uh, precious moments. Uh, and really what we, what we say we're looking to fill our homes with is, is these wonderful memories, these experiences. They, they are the essence and the heart and soul of, of uh, who we are. And, yeah, and our family values and all those things that yeah. matter most, it's unique from person to person, but that's where we peel back all of the layers to uncover what is the, the essence of home for mm -hmm. you. And then we fill your home up with those pieces and kind of curate your, your home so it tells your personal story. Mm -hmm. So where do you even start to declutter? Like I'm, I'm like a declutter freak. Like I'm, I'm so bad that I throw everything away and then it will be like a month later. I'll be like, what did I do with that? Oh yeah. Like it got dumped because in that moment I didn't want it. But so I'm like the opposite of someone who holds on to stuff. But like a lot of times getting rid of stuff and decluttering is really hard to do. So where do you start? Yeah, I think I think uh, um, I think we live in a world that that tells us more of anything is better. Um, mm. but, but when we acquire uh, when we acquire more, um, it's it really ends up being unfulfilling. And and uh, I think I'll you know I would say that what we say is clutter can be overwhelming, and the best place to start is to identify what we call the three P's: the push, the problems, and the and the payoffs. Yeah, and the first is, is the push. This is whatever's pushing or motivating you to get organized. Mm -hmm. so, so start by asking yourself, why do you want to get organized? And, and your mm -hmm. answer can be really simple from things like, I can't find what I need when I need it. Or there's even uh, bigger, more deeply rooted issues like having anxiety of, of having people over or <laughs> simply being embarrassed because you don't know where to start. You know? Ultimately, you, know, you want to land on your why and you want to write it down because this is your motivator and it's a thing that's going to um, be the, the thing that you read every time you start organizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, oh, I, I was just going to say, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, you just triggered something and I want to let you finish this answer. But I, I, when you said the why or like not a ha the anxiety about not having people over, I actually have a friend who will not have anyone over her house because mm -hmm. of that and that, and she won't listen to this because she doesn't listen to podcasts. So I know that I'm not outing her. <laughs> she's not going to, she's not going to get pissed at me, but like, that's really, that that's been a problem in her life. 
and and so that's interesting to put it in that context and like okay like this is a real problem and not just just <clears throat> something that like oh i don't want to clean up yeah, yeah. sherry mentioned we we go as for as far as having clients write it down mm -hmm. um and reviewing that every time we we uh, begin an organizing session it, it really does need to be that motivator um mm -hmm. so that's the first p is the push and and then the second uh is the problem right when it comes to your home these are the clutter challenge areas. Uh, and we say, ask yourself a handful of questions. Like, what's your biggest challenge or frustration when it comes to getting organized? Uh, what's causing the problems? Um, what, are, what are the things that are limiting you or holding you back? And, and maybe these limitations um, are current storage that you have is inconvenient. And maybe it's, you don't have any storage, so nothing has a home. <laughs> But um, perhaps there's other factors at play too, like you're, uh, you're unhappy with your home in general, or yeah. you just have that fear of getting rid of things, it, which would be very you know, different than yourself, Renee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> third chappy. You know, yeah. and, then, and then the third P in, in terms of where to start, the third P is um, the payoffs. Mm -hmm. And these are the, the goals of, of getting organized. And, and so you can ask yourself by what does home mean to you? or how do you hope to feel once things are organized? And so you can see we're digging deeper and deeper, not just looking at the surface level, the, the stuff that drives anxiety, but we're digging deeper in kind of the underpinning of what causes uh, mm -hmm. the clutter. And, and the answers to these questions not only paints us a picture of where to start, but they bring a ton of clarity around what it is that's challenging you or even what's motivating and what your goals are. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so interesting. So it's more than just walking into a space and, and visualizing, okay, this is what I want to do. Like what you guys are doing as interior designers is like the deep stuff. Like you're, you're getting, you're getting in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. absolutely. We <laughs> love to get in the weeds. It's, um, it's part of the process. What made you start thinking about it that way? Um, I think it's always been intuitive, kind of the, the mm -hmm. holistic approach to life from, from health to nutrition. It's just kind of the way we mm -hmm. view life. And then when you kind of look at it through the lens of home, it doesn't make sense any other way. And that's really what, what we've found to be a differentiator from us and our approach and, and other designers and organizers in the industry. Um, the other approach where you come in and you just kind of start tidying up or you just fill mm -hmm. a room with pretty stuff, it feels more like putting a Band-Aid and not really addressing the under, right. underlying um, questions yeah. or getting to the root cause of what home means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that clutter is costing people their uh, peace and mental health? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we live in this amazing world and everything is at our fingertips mm -hmm. from you know everything being convenient to the instant gratification of we can buy or order things right online mm -hmm. they can be on our doorstep amazon <laughs> same day delivery right. are you serious i mean it's amazing right but but there's a dark or you know a sherry says moodier side mm -hmm. uh to this idea of more is better mm -hmm. it's, it's ingrained in us in marketing and, and advertising yeah. um and and sadly renee this is um it eventually winds up leading us down a path of excess stuff. And, and while we see, we live in this see it to, to believe it society, mm -hmm. we're having too much actually takes away mm -hmm. from our quality of life, right? You know, it leads us further and further mm -hmm. away from our goal, the more that we accumulate, mm -hmm. you know, from, from being a constant source of stress and embarrassment mm -hmm. to not to mention the anxiety, um, anxiety that clutter creates. Um, to all of the wasted time we spend looking for things that we know we have, but we have no idea where it is, right. or the money that we spend buying mm -hmm. duplicates and paying for extra stuff. They're stress drivers. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and in fact, there's um, this crazy tidbit. You know, I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but I found it amazing that in the United States, there's more than 48,500 storage units in America. That is no more, way. I know, right? It's <laughs> incredible how much stuff we've accumulated as, mm -hmm. a, as a, in general, but that's more than every single McDonald's and Starbucks locations combined, which is insane. Yeah. Wow. So when we talk about the, the hidden costs of clutter, um, there, there's really something else that's missing. Yeah. And it's, it, it gets into, you know, how much time, money, and then the energy that it takes to accumulate all these belongings. And when we realize that, you know, many of these things are, are sitting in closets, collecting mm -hmm. dust, or as in Sherry just said, a, a, you know, a storage space, you can't really help but wonder, Renee, what could we have done with that time and that money that mm. we spent on those things, right? 
Um, so when we actually take the time to look at clutter through this lens, kind of from this perspective, as we say, it's, it's almost impossible to ignore the hidden cost of clutter um, mm. as it contrasts with the benefits of like, you know, being organized and having a routine that you can follow that seems intuitive to you. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. So what are tips that someone can use in order to maximize the, their joy in their home? Hmm. You know, I, I would say that, you know, a handful of tips that they can, that can really maximize the joy that they have is, is curating with intentionality, mm -hmm. right? And when I say curate, and Sherry and I often, we, we, we use this word, first off, our, our three phases are assess, curate, and transform. And those are the process, that's the process rather that we take every client through. And that curation begins to get at the core of what we truly want and, and then invest in that, right? And so um, when you ask, you know, what we can do to, to live a more purposeful or less cluttered life, it's, it's consuming with intention. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, for us, home is, we, we define home as being everything you need and nothing more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very, very oppositionary to um, how the, the industry or, or you pick up a magazine or you turn on HGTV, the latest flick on, yeah. on remodels, and it's all about layering in the pretty. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you take a step back and when you assess mm -hmm. what uh, brings you joy, you're able to, to more clearly navigate the process of mm -hmm. decluttering and organizing More or designing, designing and mm -hmm. remodeling your home by aligning yourself with everything you need yeah. that brings you joy and nothing more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I have to ask you, you brought up <laughs> HGTV and like that's a guilty pleasure of mine. So are you saying all of those pretty in products are really not functional? No, not exactly. I think that what we see on the big screen isn't necessarily reality. It's It's been edited and chopped apart mm -hmm. um, and it chops out all of the good parts. It, it, you see the end result. And so we're not led to fully understand the impact that it takes time. And it doesn't take time just because things are slow or there's timetables mm -hmm. and schedules, but it takes time because we have to do inward reflection and mm -hmm. in ourselves, what our everyday routines look like, what works, what doesn't work, what right. brings us happiness and what our family values are. So there's a whole line of, of question, kind mm -hmm. of a domino effect that um, while we are going to end up with this beautifully organized HGTV <laughs> quality space, right. it's a process that we have to follow to get right. there. <clears throat> yeah. How I long does that process typically take? Oh, it, you know, and like anything good in, in life, it takes time. <laughs> um, and, you know, and we we are very open about about that, that it takes time, yeah. uh, energy, and money. And we ask that all of our clients work with us for an entire year. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wow. We're, we're really rooted um, in, in, in helping you grow and educating you in that process of what home mm -hmm. really becomes. And... <clears throat> That's something, unfortunately, that can't be done in a 45-minute episode on Netflix, right? <laughs> um, and you wouldn't want it to be, right? Would you want your entire home to be encapsulated in a, in a very short um, tidbit of who, you, who your life is right now? Right. right. Um, like I picture decluttering, like bring in the dumpster and just start like <laughs> filling it up. It doesn't work that way. No. Uh, for some people it works. We have different organizing mm -hmm. brands and we could talk for hours about that. But I think that's part of, you know, especially mm -hmm. when you have multiple people living in the same, under the same roof, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the dynamics of, of organizing and designing your home becomes even more complex. Mm -hmm. And so, so you can see that it's so, so, so important from the beginning that we do an assessment and that you look at your mm -hmm. home as a whole, right. not just my entry closet mm -hmm. is a, a disaster yeah. or, the, you know, the kid's room it looks like a bomb went off. Like, yes, mm -hmm. those are our pain mm -hmm. points and those are our things that need to be addressed. Um, but you have to take a step back, look at your home as a whole and right. create a game plan or, or what we call as a, a roadmap to mm -hmm. help you get from point A to point Z and to prioritize how you're going to go about uh, kind of tackling all the projects so yeah. you're successful. Yeah, there's a great quote by a man uh, who mentored me named Dennis Green. Mm -hmm. he, he was a, a coach, um, a head coach in the NFL, but his quote is, uh, you plan your work and then you work your plan. Mm -hmm. And so that's really why we start with the assessment because yeah. we're going to plan the work and then throughout that curation and then into the transformation phase, we're going to work that plan. 
Oh, it's so, so interesting to me because this is just so far beyond just ha hiring someone to like pick out some, some curtains for you, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you guys work together, you're a husband and wife team. <laughs> yes. yes. I can't, I can't like let you leave this interview without asking, <laughs> how does that, how does that work? Um, great for how us. How does it work? Yeah, tell her. <laughs> well, it works great for us. I think that um, for over the course, we've been in business since 2009. And so certainly you find, um, you know, little, little buckets mm -hmm. where you settle in, where your strong suits are. And um, we, we kind of play off of each other. I tend to put, uh, work with clients more so on the front end, um, the client facing mm -hmm. interactions. Um, the design of it, we collaborate. That's where our rules kind of overlap. Mm -hmm. And then, he, John, what yeah. are your strengths? <laughs> what yeah. are your um, hot points? Well, I'm the game planner. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the football coach uh, in me, and uh, it's the it's the part of of the business where I where I live and, and work and play. Um, but I love to get out and meet with clients and really provide a different sense uh, yeah. of a perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, Sherry sees one thing one way, and I and I love to challenge her in front of clients. And in a, in a <laughs> I'm way. sure she loves that. <laughs> yeah. no, you know, you know, we challenge one another, we push one another to be better, and yeah. and and the ultimate goal that comes out of that is a really beautiful space for the client, and a space that they know has had a lot of of thought and mm -hmm. and gets into that intentionality. Right? Do you ever have couples or clients that just have a completely different idea about what they want? Oh, and then, fine. and how, how do you reconcile that? I think that it's, uh, again, it's a matter of having conversation, mm -hmm. talking about why you feel a certain way or what thing, mm -hmm. how things make you feel. Um, because when you start and kind of welcome conversation on a kind of a neutral playing ground, hence yeah. why he and she, husband <laughs> and wife team is really, really well. We allow yeah. everybody to have a voice and then we can identify what is the common thread? What is the common bond that we need to pull throughout the space? Yeah. And our, and our process is always referring back to that assessment. Yeah. So that initial phase that we take clients through, um, you know, we mentioned assess, curate and transform. When, when we're in the curation phase and we're throwing out all these great ideas and whether it, maybe it is window drapery, right? Um, and the husband says, I'm not on board with that. I don't like that. And the wife says, I really love that. We go <laughs> yep. back to that assessment and say, this is how we got here, guys. Mm -hmm. and, and suddenly what you see is it begins to make sense. The things that they said in the beginning now have... Um, principle. They have foundation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for what was selected and what was curated for them. And, and I think that that's ultimately the benefit of, of the process mm -hmm. that we take clients through, um, but also have working with them over time. Right. And, and that's really, beautiful. yeah, it's where we come from opposite. Everyone's kind of coming from <laughs> yeah. opposite corners and then through the, the transformation, we're all working together and we're supporting each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that really goes into any relationship, whether yeah. we're working together as a husband and wife, or you're working together as mm -hmm. client and, and professional, um, when you support each other and we know that we're, we're aiming towards the same goal and mm -hmm. the same outcome, mm -hmm. then that's when, when magic happens. Yeah. 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 What's so, the push? So if this design gig doesn't work out, you guys would be great divorce mediators. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make note of that. Yeah, we'll yeah. Do that. Uh, so what do you say? Because a lot of my listeners are going through a divorce or have gone through. And a lot of times when they're in that process, there there's this attachment to a house and it, they, it, and they'll be so attached to it and it won't make sense. It won't make financial sense, but yet they have this, like, I can't have, like, this is all I know. What do you say to someone about the opportunity to create a brand new space um, and using this as the opportunity to do so when someone is so attached to something like a house. Yeah, no, we've actually had a handful of clients that have had new beginnings and that's how we look mm -hmm. at it is the house is what binds you together um, from the past that you knew and the existence of who you were. But now you're, you're embarking on this new adventure, this new journey, this new beginning. And so whether you're staying in the house or you're moving on to a different home, mm -hmm. um, this is where you can get to begin redefining you. Mm -hmm. It's where you get to start accumulating and bringing with you the pieces that are going to, to kind of curate and tell the, the story that you want the future right. people that you could cross paths with, the future you to, to tell. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so really 
creating a home is, is about curating mm -hmm. and aligning yourself with your values and filling your home with things that support those, those values. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, I love that. No, I, that was like, this is going to be the sound bite because it was so good. <laughs> and, and then the beauty of that is they don't have a spouse that they have to <laughs> run it by. <laughs> they can make their own decisions. <laughs> this, is very, <laughs> yeah, this is very true. <laughs> So how has um, the pandemic really shifted what you do? I know some of your work has kind of moved to the digital space. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, we've always been a fairly progressive company. Mm -hmm. um, so before the pandemic, we were using video chat to kind of communicate and that really allows us to work with clients in different areas all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously the pandemic has, has required that we, you know, we can't fly there to do the organizing um, necessarily and some of our design installs get on hold or, or pushed around but we really plan that um, and that's that's afforded us that that kind of opportunity to do you know Sherry's gonna mention probably some virtual stuff yeah um, but go ahead yeah no I think that uh, COVID has definitely pushed all of us we've all experienced it at the mm -hmm. same time mm -hmm. in the same crazy chaos but it's forced us indoors more um, and it's caused us to look at our homes differently mm. through a different lens of, of really how we want our homes to serve us and um, what we need out of our homes. And so whether we're helping clients organize or design their home, there, there's this, this you know, cyclical process that we have that we work with clients that allows us to work virtually where we're face to face mm -hmm. during the initial stages. And then if there's a remodel or something major that, that we need to be in person, we're able to actually fly to the, the, the job sites and, and kind of manage things. Mm -hmm. but, but technology is amazing and in home <laughs> and COVID it, it, it's, it's ups and downs, mm -hmm. but it, it's really shed a light on the importance of our, our home. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, you say on your website that you seek significance over success. What does that mean? Yeah, so we've, we've um, built into our business uh, what we call our social impact. It's our charitable mission. Um, it's where we are committing uh, part of our profit to, to you know, um, uh, missions and vendors, uh, working with vendors as well, um, and doing community, you know, uh, service, right? And, and being a part and volunteering. And so there's really those three different ways that we, we seek that significance. Um, mm. It's not about necessarily the money that you can give, um, mm. but it, it also can be about, you know, who are the hands that crafted yeah, the align, sofa? Yeah, and aligning yourself with the purpose, mm -hmm. you know? So when yeah. we talk about our, our transformational journey of kind of creating a home where we do all this inward reflection of yeah. what values um, and, and what, what means the most to us, that can be stuff from where things are sourced, mm -hmm. how things are made, the people that are um, mm -hmm. creating these items and, and aligning ourselves with not just vendors, um, yeah. not just buying things off Wayfair because it's cheap and accessible, mm -hmm. but also aligning our, ourselves with vendors who, who have, have a passion and throw themselves mm -hmm. into right. the artistry and the creation of something beautiful because they know it's going to be loved and right. cherished. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that goes from stuff that we bring into our home to the, the, mm -hmm. the, um, the vendors and the contractors and the subcontractors. Mm -hmm. When you realize that it's bigger than, than self, it's a you and me type relationship, all of a sudden, um, it just, the, the experience becomes so much more transformational. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's great. How does someone find you if they want to work with you? Where, um, how can they reach out to you? Yeah, the, the best place, um, you know, to find us and connect with us is on our website, uh, which is elegantsi.com. Uh, you can take our free video course there, which is four days to a, a more beautiful and functional home. Uh, and you can connect with us on social media via that, via the website. All the links are there. Um, but really, we're, we're all about um, teaching and educating and helping to create a, a new awareness. We're, we're breaking the, the mold of, of the way we tend to think about creating a home and trying to reimagine. We're not just thinking outside the box. We like to say we're erasing it. And so, mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Um, our website is definitely the best yeah. place, elegancesi.com. Um, and, and we'd love to see you guys there. Yeah. And so we'll end with, um, you said you had this video course that talked about how to create yeah, it's it's called Four Days to a More Beautiful okay. and Functional Home. And so, it's taking you through that process of beginning to assess, curate, and then kind of starts you on the path of what transformation looks like. So we're not going to give it all away because people have to go and sign up for it, but can you give us one <laughs> tip from that course? Yeah, getting rid of the excess. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean and how do you go about doing it? 
Yeah. Um, we walk right through that. Um, and we, we give you actionable steps to curating a home with intentionality. Mm. Bring on the dumpster. I am all for it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few more rooms I haven't gotten to yet. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, oh, it's it's so day. interesting. I really like love the work that you guys are doing. I love that it's coming from a, a place that's really like internal and inside. Um, and I think that you are probably changing people's lives by that work. Yeah, we, we, we hope to. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Renee. You. It's always a pleasure.